Good morning, church. Come on, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Are you ready to sing? Lift up your voice. Here we go. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory.
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Hallelujah. You're faithful. You're so faithful. Amen. Jesus is faithful.
Let's sing this together. And you will make a way. You always make a way. Oh, yes, you do, God. You will make a way. He always makes a way. Yeah. Hallelujah. He, way, he makes ways in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. That's what our God does. Hallelujah. Nothing's too hard for you. Impossible to what you do. I know you've got this too Impossible to what you do Let's declare that into the atmosphere Nothing's too hard for my Jesus Impossible to what you do And I know you've got this too Impossible to what you do Impossible is what you do, God. Merciful God, faithful God. Hallelujah. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. Thank you for your mercy. Your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Josh. Hi, I'm Pastor Tara, and thank you for being with us today. And we trust that this word is going to bless you today. So let's go live now to the sermon. Uh, I'd like to pick up on this thought around being grateful. And um, 1 Thessalonians 5 speaks about this. It says from verse 16, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is an instruction that the Apostle Paul gives to the Thessalonians. But what's really significant to me is that this instruction really only comes towards the end of his letter. In so many ways what the Apostle Paul does as he writes letters to the various churches is he starts his letter on a foundation. And that foundation is always the gospel. In this particular letter, he speaks often about what he refers in the letter to, this is the message that I spoke to you about when I was with you. And we know that that message is the gospel. It's the finished work of Jesus. And so what I'd like to be able to do is to look at the end of that first part of the foundation that the Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Thessalonians. It's in chapter 3 and verse 12. He says this, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all of his saints. For me, this is such a great summary of the gospel. Because the result of the gospel working in our lives is verse 13. That he may establish your heart blameless in holiness before our God. Who does that work? Jesus. It's a capital H. And when we recognize that the result of the gospel of receiving the good news of what Jesus has done is that it works in us. Jesus is at work in us, establishing our heart in holiness so that we may be blameless before God. What a beautiful picture. What a beautiful picture of God's word. Perhaps it's good just to remind us this morning that the Old Testament, 
the way that you were holy and the way that you were righteous under the old covenant is very clear. It was through what you did. Either you obeyed the law and were considered holy and righteous, or you disobeyed the law and you were considered unrighteous. But in the new covenant, it's completely different. It's very different in the new covenant. Because in the new covenant, it's not about what I do. It's about what Jesus has done. In fact, my holiness, my righteousness is in faith through Jesus and his work. Paul writes this in, to the Romans. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation because I love the way that he puts it just in plain, simple English. Romans 3.21. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirement of the law. As was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. So how are we made righteous? By placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Under the new covenant, in the New Testament, our, our righteousness is by faith, not by works. That's why God this morning speaks a word over our congregation and he says, rest. The reason we can rest is because it is our faith that makes us in good standing with God. In the Old Testament, it was their works. They had to do this. They were busy from morning till night, every single day of the year. If you read and try and live according to that, you have great respect for our Jewish brothers because it is such a taxing system to be a part of, to try and be good enough. But in reality, the new covenant that we live under is a covenant in which Jesus has done that work. It is our faith in his work that makes us righteous. And this is what allows us to establish a heart blameless in holiness before God. Because when we live in that space, and this is what the Paul, Paul was writing to the Thessalonians. He was writing and he said, guys, your, your faith in Jesus is what establishes your heart in holiness before God. And when we understand that that's the foundation, what we started out reading where he says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. We recognize that that is a fruit the root is the gospel. And if we don't understand that, we can look at Paul's instruction because it is an instruction. He says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, be grateful. Oh. Pastor Annie said this, sometimes we don't always feel like it's, we've got a lot to be grateful for. But the root, church, the root of the fruit, the root is be established in the gospel. Receive the finished work of Jesus. And as we are established in the gospel, there's a fruit that grows out of that, that is joy, that is prayer, communion with God, that is a heart that is grateful. You see, happiness is not joy, and joy is not happiness. Happiness is part of our circumstance. If my circumstances are favorable, then I can be happy. But if my circumstances are not favorable, then I'm sad. But joy is different. Joy is a fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in our lives that is independent of circumstances. Joy will say that even though the circumstances are tough, I'm not being punished by God because Jesus was punished by God on my part. Joy says that even though the circumstances are tough, God is working things out for my good. Joy says that even though circumstances are tough, I can count it all joy knowing that the, that will produce character in my heart and in my life. Joy is a fruit of being established in the gospel. 
It's the same with his instruction to pray without ceasing. Because when we break that down, in its simplest form, prayer is simply talking to God and God talking to me. So when I'm going through tough times, when I'm going through difficult moments, what I recognize is that I can stay connected to God because I know that the tough time, the tough circumstance is not a punishment. If I think God is punishing me, guess what? I'm not going to talk to him. I'm going to stay away from him. Fine, you be like that. I'm going to go and sulk in my room. But because I have a revelation of the gospel, even in the tough times, even in those moments that are difficult, I can stay connected because, Dad, I know you love me. Dad, I know that even though the devil's taking his best shot at me, you're going to work it out for good. Dad, even though I don't fully understand this, I can see that you're going to set me up to win. I, I keep talking. And you know what? In that communication, God keeps speaking to me. And he leads me and guides me through those tough moments so that he sets me up on the other side of that to really win. Paul also writes and he says, in everything give thanks. You see, a heart that is overflowing with thanks is a heart that is centered on the gospel, on the finished work of Jesus. Because even in the crisis, I can recognize that God is working it out for my good. Even though the devil attacks me, God will take that attack and turn it right around and set me up to win. That's why I can give thanks. It's easy to give thanks when things are going great. Not so easy to give thanks when things are not going great. But when we recognize that the gospel is my foundation, it allows me to truly give thanks in every situation. And if you're here today and you're struggling to give thanks today, just feed on the gospel. Just receive the finished work of Jesus because as you do that, the fruit of joy and prayer and giving thanks is something that be, be established in your life. If you're here today and you never knew that God loves you, that there's even this good news called the gospel we would love to be able to give you an opportunity to respond to the work that Jesus has done for you. In a very short summary, God so loves the world that he gives his only son who dies for us on a cross in our place to take a punishment that he never deserved so that we don't have to take it. That's why it's called good news so many of us go through life feeling that God is angry with us for the mistakes that we've made the wrongs that we've committed we feel like he wants to punish us but Jesus came to earth to be able to show us how much God loves us we have a father who loves us so much that he was prepared to give his son to be the ransom for us. Jesus went through the punishment that we deserved so that we don't have to. And when we get a picture of that, when we understand that, our hearts really respond in gratitude. Our hearts overflow to be able to say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me. And whether you're in this room here this morning or whether you're watching us online if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior we would love to be able to give you an opportunity to step into 2024 knowing the good news having received the fact of a gift is something that you have two options with you can reject it or receive it we would love nothing more than you to receive the good news of the gift of salvation, to know that your sins are forgiven, to know that God will give you a new start, to know that he will come in 
can lead you and guide you and direct your life and set you up to win. He's a good father. He loves you so much. And we're going to ask our church family to be able to pray together with you this morning. If you'd like to reach out and receive that gift of the forgiveness of your sins, receive that gift of new life, receive that gift of a relationship with a loving God who just wants you to win in life, then you can do that. You can reach out and receive that gift by just acting on what you have in your heart, which is faith. The Bible teaches that when we talk about the gospel, when we preach the gospel, the response of that is faith rises in our hearts. And we would love to give you an opportunity to respond to that. You just respond to that faith in your heart by speaking out what you believe is true. And I'm going to ask our church family to pray with you, to speak out with you so that you feel supported in this decision to reach out and lay hold of what God has given you. It's the best gift you can ever receive. To have peace with God. To know that you get adopted into His family. Accepted, loved. To have Him working on your behalf. That all those difficult things that you go through in life, He works out for your good. That's what produces joy, produces thanksgiving in our hearts. And so I'm going to ask every head to bow and every eye to close. This is a personal moment between you and God. But if you'd like to receive the gift of salvation, pray this prayer with us at this time. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I believe you were punished in my place. And I just want to say thank you. I want to receive that gift. I want to make it my own. Father, thank you for allowing Jesus to be my Savior. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to be receiving, remembering our victory remembering our righteousness together. We're going to be receiving communion together. So if you can, wherever you are watching, take out some bread, some juice, some crackers, some water, anything to be the body and the blood of Jesus. This is such a precious moment. As you can see, it's not traditional. It's not about being traditional. It's about seeing God's power in our circumstance. This is our moment of remembrance where we see that God can turn a sick body into a healthy body and a person who is literally consumed with brokenness into someone who is whole, experiencing the shalom peace of God. So as we take this bread, this cracker, we speak and we say, this is Jesus's body that is broken for me. By his stripes, I am healed. And as we break and we eat, we receive and we reflect and we remember our healing is from the Lord. We are healed and whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now we're going to receive his blood shed for us speaks that you are righteous. In Christ Jesus, you will never stand before God and not be seen as righteous. God always extends the gold scepter to you and says, yes, my child, you are accepted, you are favored, you are pleasing. We remember today that Jesus shed his blood, that all our sin, past, present, and future has paid for and full. We are loved and we are righteous in Christ Jesus. We receive together today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Has given me